But we turn now to the phone line. Sean O'Hara, my compadre from the NFL Network, NFL Game Day First. You can catch him every single Sunday with Michael Robinson, Coach Brian Billick, and Melissa Stark at 7 a.m. Eastern on NFL Network joining me here. How are you, Sean? I'm doing well, Rich. How are you? I'm doing great. How did you guys with the Giants prepare for Belichick? and be successful against him in a one-game situation, obviously, in a way that few teams are able to do? Sean? That's a great question, and I love that you just segued from the boss, the boss in music, to the boss in the NFL. There you go. Why not? And, and, and being that I'm a Jersey guy, I just got a real quick, when Bruce Springsteen, when his name comes up, yes. the first thing that comes to my mind is the Stone Pony. The Stone Pony is a great little concert venue down in Asbury Park, Oh, and it's where Bruce Springsteen kind of made his start. And when I was at Rutgers and, you know, I was working a, a part-time job in the offseason to try to pay the bills. I didn't qualify for any of the Pell Grants or I didn't get any of this emergency relief fund that they, the kids have now. So the only money I had in my pocket was what I earned. I used to bounce at the Stone Pony. <laughs> and that I, – I, I did a ton of concerts there. And I tell you, it's a special place. It's a great place. If you, Bruce still sometimes go, goes back and plays concerts there. It's very small, but I know it's a special place in his heart. So that always comes to mind. I love throwing that out there. Anybody that's, that's ever been to a concert there it, it knows exactly what I'm talking about. How Stone many, Pony in Asbury Park. How many people did you actually physically bounce, though, Sean? But you, you know, we, we were actually called peacekeepers. Okay. Good. That's what it said on our shirt. We were there to keep the peace. Okay. Um, a lot less people at the Bruce Springsteen concert, but when Ziggy Pop came to town Ooh. or when the Warp Tour came to town, things got a little crazy, a little sweaty, a little messy. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, that was, that was, uh, it was 120 bucks to go do a concert. So I wasn't turning that down. Ha -ha, nice. So now, now to your question, yes. I, I tell you, Bill Belichick, the, the thing that, that is baffling is when you see teams go into Gillette, there is this Mike Tyson effect. That they just crumble. They, they, they literally wet themselves down the leg, wet the bed, whatever you want to call it. But when just look at the implosion that both the Miami Dolphins and the Houston Texans had two weeks in a row. And when you play the Patriots, the Patriot way, when you think about the way that Bill Belichick gets his team ready to play, they are not going to beat themselves. And I think that's one of the things that we always knew. And it's one of the reasons why Tom Coughlin always, you know, he, he coached a little bit more thoroughly that week. And I think Bill felt the same way about us because they had so much respect for each other for the way that their team is always prepared. You don't see them make the mistakes that these other teams make. So that is always a challenge in itself. But I tell you, the way that they won last night, um, you know, this is just, I mean, this is the trump card. You know, and I'm sure you've you got a Patriots fan that you're staring at right now that is just, in, I mean, pure gluttony right now when he woke up this morning. He was just reveling in the Patriot way and the fact that they were able to do it with a rookie quarterback making his first start on three days preparation. It's unreal. Sean O'Hara joining me here. The thing is, we always have these conversations about Belichick, right? And, and why is it so difficult? Because it sounds so simple. Just do your job. Know, you know, know the situation. Know what you need to do to execute and execute it. And it sounds so simple. Why is it so difficult to replicate around the NFL in this it, copycat league? You know, I, I've always felt like um, the best coaches are great teachers. And I think that's one of the things that gets lost in, in the NFL, is, especially now. You, you're playing so many young guys. With it, because of the salary cap, because of you know, the injuries, whatever the case may be, you have so many young guys and limited reps, limited opportunities to teach them about the concepts and the little, you know, minutia of the game, the little innuendos that make you make that make good teams great. And that's what he has perfected. You know, it's the keep it simple, stupid theory. And, and they don't, you know, they really don't try to razzle dazzle and, and wow you too much. I mean, we saw a little bit of the option that Jacoby Brissett has run before, so it wasn't new to him. It might have been new to their offense, but. Uh, I think that it's the little aspects. You know, we saw it in Malcolm Butler, that play in the Super Bowl. And it's just a, coach, a little coaching point, as simple as, hey, as soon as you see that slant, put your foot in the ground and drive off it and just go. You know, that, that teaching point 
is the difference between winning a Super Bowl and not winning a Super Bowl. But he can't. And that's really what they do over the top. But he can't do it do it in a way that no other coach does it, right? I mean, that's that's the whole point is that yeah, they they are always on point. Whether it's the it, it, they're never not when when one when their opponent opposing quarterback, for instance, throws behind his receiver behind the line of scrimmage and the ball's on the ground. How many times have we seen the receiver who didn't catch the ball just walk away and everybody else on offense thinks the play stopped, but someone from the Patriots picks the balls up on uh, on defense and and runs it in? I mean, how, those are the types of Patriot plays that you see, and it's not as if nobody else in the NFL does it. It just seems that they're consistent in doing it. And I, I, not to just put too fine a point on it, but why is – what did you do, I guess, then in the Super Bowl to prepare against it in a way that other teams are not able to do that? Yeah, we knew going into the Super Bowl, we knew that mentally you had to be on your game at all point in time, at every single play, because they were going to do something different that they hadn't really shown. And we actually, we went back and re- we researched the, the previous three Super Bowls the Patriots had been in before we played them in Super Bowl 42. And no matter what defense they had been running all season long, if they were a 3-4 defensive front team all season long, the first play of the Super Bowl, they lined up in a 4-3 even defense. They showed you a completely different front from what they had been doing all season long just to see how you handled it. And so my line coach was telling us, hey, guys, look, they're going to do something different. On that first play or the first series, they're going to show us a front that you haven't seen on tape because they just want to know, are we ready and how do we handle it? And sure enough, the big Vince Wolfers out there, and they've got their three, four personnel, their base defense out there. And we come up to the line, we've got a run play call, and they stem to a four, three defense on the very first play. We're ready because Tom Coughlin knew exactly what to expect. Hmm. But that's what they do. And, and it's the mind games, the game within the game that they do such a good job of. Um, and, and I think one of the things that's, that, that I think is lost on it too is uh, Tom Brady, he's not there right now, but – Bill Belichick gets after Tom Brady's ass in practice. I know it. I've I've got buddies that play with him. And when you can coach your all-star, your franchise player, the best quarterback to ever play the game, when he's coachable, when Bill is allowed to chew on him, the trickle-down effect means everybody is is accountable. Everybody's coachable. And I think that's why Tom Brady and, and Bill Belichick have had such a great relationship, a great rapport, and it helps with Bill's relationship with everybody else on the team. Because if I can yell at Tom and he takes it and he's coachable and he's okay with it, then I can yell at anybody and I can, I can coach anybody. Sean O'Hara joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So then which team do you think has the best chance this year to, to throw their hat in the ring? That the, because Patriots are clearly an elite team right now. Like without Gronk, without Brady, without Ninkovich, and, and then last night without Hightower. I mean, when they all come back, Look out. So which which teams do you think? Is it is it Von Miller even with Simeon? Because you guys in that Super Bowl in 07 and then later on when you were not with the team again and they won again, it was just four hands, four sets of hands in the dirt to go hunt Brady, and then you could continue to keep that line fresh, play defense, lock down uh, on the receivers, put up enough points on the board to win. Maybe that's Denver. I don't know. Who who are who are the teams out there, Sean? right now yeah i mean in denver because of their defense you know i still don't think we know what what trevor simeon brings to this offense um you know i think he has two two throws over 15 yards so it's really been a run first offense we really haven't seen them um you know, their offense play from behind and, and really have to you know air it out so you know offensively we're not sure i'm not sure what they can do and, and what trevor simeon can do um I think the Steelers right now, with the way they're playing offensively, uh, their run, their running attack, the way that Ben's playing in the AFC, I, I think that would be a really good matchup. Um, you know, but really, you know, right now it's so hard to tell. I mean, the Oakland Raiders look good on offense, and then all of a sudden their defense is just, you know, it's a track meet. You know, despite all the talent that they have. Um, so I, I think the Steelers' offense is pretty phenomenal, and the Broncos' defense. They've got to be from I, I was shocked, and really, you know, the Patriots' defense, to me, doesn't get enough credit for how good they are. Their corners, you know, Logan Ryan and, you know, McCourty and Malcolm Butler, what they have done in, in the first three weeks 
of the season. I mean, they are contesting every single ball. They might lead the NFL in pass breakups right now, and nobody's talking about their secondary. But, but what the Patriots were able to do to that Texans defensive front, mm-hmm. I mean, the only shots you saw of J.J. Watt were him on the sideline. That's it. And Genevian Clowney, non-factor. Or on the ground, right? by the way. On the ground. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes he was just... on the ground a lot. So it's, uh, they are the ultimate equalizer. They, they find a way to take your stars out of the game with the exception of the aforementioned Vaughn Miller, who they just didn't have an answer for last year. And maybe Cam. Cam and the Patri- and Panthers, if they see him down the road, you know, in Houston. That's my prediction for Super Bowl 51. It's Patriots-Panthers coming into the season, which is the first one that NFL Network covered. I, I will see you on NFL Game Day first, as always, sitting on my set watching you wrap up your show on Sunday. Yeah, we, we love uh, we love setting, setting the table for you guys. Love it. And uh, I, I got to say, Rich, I love seeing you at Michigan – the pep talk mm-hmm. was awesome. Oh, you saw that? Oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. you know Brady did I mean, it. Brady did it the week after too. At, at, yeah, at Michigan. I mean, talk about a tough act to follow. You know, I, I think Brady <laughs> was quaking in his boots a little bit. You know, I mean, it, it, okay. there was. I didn't see if you were standing on a stool, but it was every bit of new rock. I mean, it was outside and outside, inside and inside and outside. I mean, it, it had Thank everything. You, I think it was. Uh, it was pretty great. And to me, the coolest part about all of that was. That might be the first time I've ever seen you in Jordan gear. <laughs> and, and, and the Jordan gear, I mean, it looked good. It did look good. It looked, it looked really good. Jordan gear is awesome. Love the Jordan gear. Yeah. Jordan gear is yeah. great. Uh, and Phenomenal. Sean, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll, see yeah. you, I'll see you on Sunday, as always. Okay. Looking forward to it. You bet. That's Thanks Sean O'Hara, at Sean O'Hara 60. And uh, on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.